just put new strings on a bunch of my guitars this weekend. So nice. Yes. You still do that stuff yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. It usually takes about a half an afternoon to, uh, you know, I change them usually like four or five at a time, four or five guitars. That way it only takes an hour or two, you know? Right. Very cool. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on this, uh, warm day here in California. How warm is it in North Dakota, Steve? Uh, I think we're sitting right around 25. Hey, we're above zero. There you go, man. <laughs> Yes. Hey guys, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Truth Guitar Method, Troy, Mike, Birdie Bear, Birdie Bear, Pat, Don, Richard, James, Tom Robbins, Sean Evans, Alfonso Murr. Guys, thank you for showing up. Anthony Whitaker, Zvetislav. Richie's we have folks from all over the place. Hey guys, uh wherever you're from, tell us. We love to read all this cool things. Belgium, awesome. We love Massachusetts, to. Minnesota, cold here in Minnesota, yeah. Oklahoma yep. City, New Jersey. Hunter from the east side. That sounds like a movie. I don't know where the east side is. East side of what? <laughs> east side of <laughs> Is that New York? Uh, the Last Jedi, Columbus, Ohio. Wow, a lot of folks here. Fort Myers, the Big Island of Hawaii. Bob Dugan, no oh, Dungan. Wow, I would love to go to the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, Vienna, Austria, Dundee, Scotland, Reno, Southern Oregon, Norway, Indiana, Scotland. Uh. Wow. Virginia, Nigeria, Nigeria. Yeah. Georgia, the country. No, Georgia, the state. Uh, Germany, Andreas from Pittsburgh, Andrew, Germany, Cali, Kevin, Scotland, Hoffrichter. Awesome. Hello. Super everybody. cool, man. Serbia. Spain. Where in Spain? I've been to Spain before. I'm curious. Uh, Maine, Los Angeles, guys, this is so cool. I'm, I can just sit and read these all day. Israel makes uh, the world look smaller. It does. Iceland, Iceland. That's so cool. I think that may be the first time I've ever seen anybody on one of these calls from Iceland. That's cool. Yeah. Madrid. Oh, that's a great city. One of the great cities of the world. So Scotland in there, Alabama, North Carolina. Where are you from, Fanny Jones in North Carolina? I love North Carolina. Hunter Smith, Vermont, Latvia. Latvia. Crazy That's Rotterdam cool City. Canada. Dude, this is freaking amazing. This is why we, we should do these. Uh, I think we're on to something doing these in the morning. Uh, here. That's what I said is it's great because then, you know, whether or not there are more viewers, there's just people can, can join worldwide, which is so cool. Yeah. Sweet. Brownsville, Texas. <laughs> Portugal. Ooh, I've heard that's a beautiful place. Belize, Utah. Crazy. This is freaking me out, man. Okay. So I have to be have to calm down. Erie, Pennsylvania. Dubai. Dubai. Bombay. Wales. Richardson, Texas. I was just talking wow. about Steve Grimmett from Grim Reaper. Whitakers. From the UK. Oh, that's right. Cool. Yeah. We've got another collaboration thing coming soon so i had to talk to him this morning <laughs> somebody said technically i'm in a call right now teaching third graders <laughs> that's that's awesome <laughs> we should hook them up to this let them learn guitar yeah right that's uh awesome philippines wow what time is it in the philippines milan italy tony escobar from Milan, Italy. Awesome. Guys, thanks for coming. Really appreciate you guys. We're about, I don't know, four or five minutes in here while everybody's still connecting. Stockton, UK. Catalina, Long Island. <laughs> Catalina. Just kidding. Oh, that's funny. Kenya. 
Wow. Describe that packy chip. It was hot, but I've, I grew up eating incredibly hot stuff. Um, so it was hot, but for about two minutes, and then then it was then it was okay. So wow. I think I disappointed people because I didn't get all crazy with it. But it really it was hot, but it only lasts for a couple of minutes. Mm. Western New York, Pete Eason from Western New York. Where where Western New York? I used to live in Rochester for a while. I went to school up there. Uh, Spokane. Verona, Italy. That's a gorgeous place. I've actually been there. Massimiliano Gallo. No, Gallo. No, do you pronounce the L's in Italian? Man, I'm really off track here. <laughs> Riverside. I'm right down, you're right down the street from me. Cool. All right, guys. Hey, thanks again for being here. Uh, let's get started. We want to give you as much value from joining us today as we possibly can. Today we're doing a uh, essential techniques workshop for you. Today is on picking and rhythm control. Picking and rhythm control. So anything that you have questions about, especially regarding picking and rhythm control, or any type of techniques, whether it's soloing techniques like bends and slides and hammer-ons and pull-offs, or for some kind of rhythm challenge you may be happen uh, having, let us know if there's a particular issue you're having with picking. We're taught to answer all those for you. We're going to have a uh, we're going to have a question and answer session here. About halfway through, we're going to do a rapid fire question and answer session where we're going to try to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. Um, I'll be fielding those for you and handing them hand them over to you, Steve. And we're also going to uh, show you guys how to kind of like how Steve's brain works. I'm going to share with you a behind the scenes look about uh, how Steve creates courses for you. And this is a mind map that he creates before he ever records the first minute of video. He sits down and creates these uh, start to finish mind maps of how he wants to lay out a course. And I'm going to show you the, the way that works a little later. I'll show you the, the mind of Steve Stein, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, people really enjoy that. We're going to do that. Also, guys, if you want to learn this stuff, uh, keep watching. Keep tuned in. Turn off your phone, maybe. Turn off your notifications. Like, Just stay focused, and uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this that will be super valuable for you. You can take away, and it'll be an aha moment for you. If you want to learn that, keep watching. Stay tuned. If you want to learn it even faster, go to guitarzoom.com and check out Steve's new course. It's called Essential Techniques by Steve Stein. It's a big six and a half hour step by step course just on technique. And uh, I think you'll like it. A whole lot of people have already signed up for it. And in fact, so many have, we decided to extend the introductory uh, price. I don't know if I told you this, Steve. We actually decided to extend the the sale through for for a few more days. I can't remember how long, but it was going to end today. But um, we've been doing these workshops, and we kind of out of the hat decided to do a couple of more of these. So a whole lot of people uh, were very interested in continuing to come to these and wanted to get more information about your new course. So we decided to extend it a few more days, guys. So if you're interested, it's available right now at the introductory price. Uh, Essential Techniques by Steve Stein. Available at guitarzoom.com. Welcome, Steve. Hello, Dan. <laughs> By the way, if you guys don't know who the heck I am, I'm the founder of Guitar Zoom. It's my good friend, Steve Stein. We've been working together for many years now. Always a pleasure to be here with you, man. Um, oh, one thing I did want to mention before we get kicked off, while everybody's still kind of piling in. If you guys are comfortable in sharing this, we did this the last few sessions. And it was really cool. It's, it's really a fun thing for Steve and I to, to watch. You guys told us where you're from. Please tell us what, what challenge you're currently having. We'll try to answer that. But also, we'd like to know this. Why do you play guitar? Why do you play? And what has guitar done in your life? What is playing guitar? How has it changed your life? So why do you play and how has guitar changed your life? That's a really fascinating question that Steve and I love to, to uh, read your answers to. One guy the last time said that basically it's the reason he's married because he met his wife. She came up to him. He was playing some place and, you know, that whole rock star guy on the stage thing. One person had a terrible car accident and basically 
through uh, guitar, was able to do some rehab and get back on his feet. One guy we met in person in Nashville actually had a, a drinking problem. Got interested in started watching Steve's videos on YouTube. Ended up becoming a Guitar Zoom member. member uh, got his life turned around. So it's just fascinating to us, and keeps the old fires burning. When we get to know kind of what you, what your story is. That's what we want to know. Helps keep me off booze. Laugh out loud, says Pat Perry. Roger that, sir. <laughs> a good hobby is is better than too much booze. All right, guys. I'm going to turn it over to Steve. Let him take it from here. Today we're doing picking and rhythm control. So I hope you're ready for this. Take it away, my friend. Okay. Um, the big thing I'm going to focus on, uh, rhythm control, I'm not exactly sure what we mean by rhythm control, but picking is what we're going to focus on for the most part. And then if we have any questions about different rhythm things, we can go through that a little bit. Um, but basically, you know, if you think about it, when you play guitar, when you're, when you're playing single note ideas, you're either picking them or you're slurring them or you're... Uh, you're sweeping or, or arpeggiating them. Those are really the three different kinds of things that you can do. So when you're picking, either you're down picking something or you're alternate picking something or we might be adding some element of legato in. Where we're adding in hammer-ons and pull-offs and that sort of thing. Um, and then the other thing is, is that we can certainly rake through or sweep through things as well when we're playing. If I play something, I might push through some things. So I thought what we would do is we would talk about some of those techniques and understand that in the, in the and I hate to say real world because it sounds silly, but on, on the other side of practice, most guitar players use all of these things. So everything isn't picked and everything isn't legato, and everything isn't sweep picking. It's just kind of a combination of those things that makes it feel most comfortable. But then there's the, the, the rhythm control aspect that I was thinking about with this was, when you do those things though, understand that sometimes the, the element of being able to feel that rhythm changes if you're picking it versus maybe doing legato or something like that. So what I'd like to do before we even start off here is just talk about control of the notes themselves. And I talked about this in one of the other sessions, but I'd like to just go back and revisit that just for a moment. So let's say you're playing an open chord or a power chord or something like that, or even a bar chord where you don't want all the strings, right? So let's say it's something like I'm playing a G chord. I'm playing the Angus Young G chord. So in playing that, what I'm doing is on the fifth string, what Angus has a tendency to do, and this is why I do this so much, is I, I deaden out the fifth string. So instead of making a full four finger G, what Angus does a lot is he'll take his middle finger and he'll deaden out the fifth string underneath there so it doesn't ring out. And I remember the first time seeing that written down where it had an X on there and I was like, well, how do you strum the sixth string and then strum the other ones mm -hmm. and not hit that string? Like that would be really, really tough to do. And it's not, you strum it, you control the strings when you play. So you see right there, what I'm doing is I'm killing that fifth string, but the rest of them can vibrate. Let me show you an example of a power chord. If I played a power chord on the sixth string, I'm gonna be playing three fingers. You know, sometimes you only play two fingers, it's whatever works for you, but I'm gonna play three strings. So the question is, what about the other three strings? Well, instead of leaving them open and exposed like that to be able to vibrate, I purposely, again, touch them with my first finger to deaden out all of those strings. And there's two things that happens with that. Number one, those strings are now gone, so you can't hear them. And number two, that way when I strum, I don't have to deviate my strumming at all. And we talked about rhythm, I think in the first group, first live session or whatever it was. But when I strum, I don't have to worry about like just going like up here or something like that so I don't hit the wrong strings. They're all gone, so I don't have any problems with that. So whenever I play, that's exactly what I do. Now, let's say I took that fifth string or that sixth string power chord there, and let's say I moved it down one string. So when I move it down, now I'm no longer on the sixth string. So that sixth string can ring out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first finger and I'm going to press on the fifth string like I want to, 
but I'm gonna use the tip of my index finger to lightly touch the sixth string so it dies. So when I strum, again, you don't hear it. Now, does that mean that I should always strum it all the time? I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I just wanna... Right, that sort of thing, then I wouldn't be hitting that. But if I was doing... That kind of strum, then I would most certainly be hitting that string. So learning how to control those strings are really important to developing the proper sound of whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to create like that. Now, the same idea keeps going when it comes to single notes. So let's say I wanted to go to the fourth string and I wanted to pluck the fourth string. Well, now the fourth string I'm pressing on, but the fifth and sixth str strings are now exposed, right? Well, I know I can touch the fifth string with the tip of my index finger, so that's going to deaden that. And I know I can touch the bottom strings with the rest of my first finger, so that's going to kill those. But what I'm not touching is the sixth string. So what happens there is I'm going to take this hand and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to start touching the sixth string up here. Usually with this part of my hand is what I use, but everybody's different. And now all you're going to hear is that string. Everything else is deadened out. And then the last thing that you'll notice, which has nothing to do with any of that, is I roll my volume off. Whenever I'm not playing, my volume is off. Okay? This is a cruel rule that I learned in college when I got chewed out by my college professor for being on stage. We used to have these guitar recitals back at Moorhead State University where all the other bands would come to watch the new recruits, the new players, because there were so many great guitar players at Moorhead State at that time. So we would do these, these um, what are they called again, Dan? Uh, uh, recitals. Recitals. Yeah. yeah, so we would do these recitals and the, the place would be packed. And I had very little experience with playing on stage because I was 17 when I went to college. And, um, and I remember playing a riff and I didn't shut off my volume and he absolutely chewed me out. So from that point forward, I learned that whenever I'm playing, my volume goes off. So my volume is always off if I'm not playing. And when I want to play, and then it's off again. So those are ways that I control things when I play. So it always sounds, I'm not getting unwanted sounds from other places. So that's something to start with before we get into these other things. Super cool. So you're always rolling that volume knob on and off. I, I, I replace my volume knobs about three times a year because I'm always rolling them on and off, always. And, and the thing for me is, is that they have to be loose. Like, you know, when you buy, sometimes you buy a guitar and you turn it and it's really tight. Mm -hmm. I have the, the, um, the tone pot and the volume pot replaced, so they're very loose. So I literally, if you can hear that, they literally yeah. roll on their own. So I can control it. You know, I can turn it up and down very easily to get the sound I want. And when I'm done, it's off. That's so cool. Yeah. So it's those are things that people don't think about all the time. But that's that's the trick because when you start learning to play, for instance, loud, if you buy an amp and you know maybe you're jamming with a band or something like that. <laughs> You have to control all of this so you, so people don't hear all those other strings, right? And uh, the noise that they can cause and all those sorts of things. And that way, if I touch all those strings as well, and I'm I'm playing very loud, and I get a feedback, let's say I want a, a I want a feedback, which oftentimes you do, I can control that feedback. No, I'm not going to get it now because I'm not very loud. Right? And sometimes you can even use palm muting to control that too. But you'll always notice when I'm playing, unless, unless it's something where I really want more than one note ringing out, everything, everything connects to each other, but they don't overlap, right? And that's what you're looking for 
when you play is trying to keep them all very clear and clean. As you play. <laughs> so good. So good. Guys, um, if you're just now joining us, we're about 20 minutes into this Essential Techniques workshop today. We're talking about picking and rhythm control. Everything we were talking about today is related to Steve's new course. It's called Essential Techniques, and it's available right now at the introductory price at guitarzoom.com. It's about a six and a half hour course. It's all in technique. So we're just going to scratch the surface of just one very small aspect of technique today. But this course Steve uh, created for you is about six hours long, and a whole lot of people have already signed up for it. In fact, if you're on this call and you have already signed up for the Essential Techniques course, come back and post wherever you are uh, what you're currently working on in that course because it has lots of different sections. And you don't have to go through the entire thing from start to finish. You can bounce around. So I'm curious, people that have already signed up, what are you working on and what do you think about it so far? That'd be super cool. Also, guys, we're streaming this thing live to three different YouTube channels and uh, I think like three or four different Facebook groups and pages and things. And so where you currently are, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or some other place, you might be watching this, um, what you're seeing, the, the comments that you might be seeing or whatever that people are making, Steve and I are actually seeing that times probably about 10 because they're all being fed into this one thing that Steve and I can see from all these different places. So if, if you're like, wait, they're not answering my questions because we're there's a whole lot of other questions coming in at the same time. So what we're trying to do is we actually have somebody, Mike, who's helping me right now. And um, he's putting together all the questions. So if you have any questions regarding technique, picking and rhythm, uh, or anything else regarding technique, go ahead and post them wherever you are. Michael, grab that and then put them into this thing that we have here. And we're going to do a question and answer session for you a little bit later. So keep that in mind. And if you're joining us later, if you missed any of the previous sessions, you'll hear Steve say stuff like, we did this in a previous workshop. And you might be like, wait a minute, I thought this was the first one. Don't worry. We, take, we took all the workshops and put them on the Guitar Zoom YouTube channel for you. You can go there and watch all of them. There's actually about five or six hours worth of workshops there already. And then this one, when it's uh, after we're done with this live broadcast, will be put there as well. So you can always go back and watch those. And of course, if you want to get the course, everything we're talking about that is, is in the course. Central Techniques, available at guitarzoom.com. All right, Steve, where do we go from here, my friend? Okay, well, we've already talked a lot about, and, and of course, the, the course goes in way more detail, but we've talked a lot about down picking and alternate picking. And a lot of your questions are either A, answered in some of the live sessions that we've already done, or you just have to understand that these things, they take time, right? That's the whole thing with, with practice is that you've got to do it over and over and over to develop strength and stamina and speed, right? You just have to do these things. So if we take, for instance, an alternate picking idea, Here's something to think about a little bit. If you're trying to work on your alternate picking, oftentimes with alternate picking, we build what we call three note per string patterns where we're playing three notes on each string. So let's just say we took one little piece of a three note per string pattern. So I'm gonna go to the seventh fret here. I'm gonna play seven, eight, 10. So I'm playing down, up, down. Now, before I ever worry about speed picking or alternate picking or all these other things, I have to make sure that those notes are separated like I just talked about in the beginning of this live session. I've got to control these notes. I got to make sure everything else is deadened, right? So I want to make sure that that's set up first. Okay, now, as we've talked about before, and again, we talk about it in the course, whenever I'm picking things and my hands have to synchronize, I have to understand that before I worry about synchronization of my hands, I have to make sure that this hand, which is my fretting hand, is strong enough to execute the things that I want to do. Because no matter what it is that I'm doing, they're combinations of fingers, right? One and two, or one and three, or three and four, or whatever it might be. I have to be aware of that when I start trying to put these together. And that's why for me, I always recommend for people, practice a lot of legato exercises. Practice a lot of picking exercises and they're all in the course, but you know, practice for instance, the three minute down picking exercise, different kinds of things like that. Practice the various legato exercises that are in there to develop those. Then you move on to what I call synchronicity, right? You're gonna synchronize these two hands together 
by practicing whatever it is, which is what I'm going to show you right now. So as I play this 7, 8, 10, I'm playing down, up, down. Well, I'm going to go to the 7th fret of the 1st string, and I'm going to do that with an up strum. Because if you think about it, when I'm playing, I'm just simply going down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I'm doing alternate picking. So what I want to train my pick to be able to do is to move to a new string with an upstroke without it feeling awkward. Because when we first start playing, oftentimes, we always think that we need to start with a down pick, and that's not always the case. Now, this isn't religion. We're going to talk about some other things, too, that you can do. But in this particular case, there is nothing else I, I can do that would be more efficient. So I'm going to go down, up, down, up. And what I start doing in my head as I play this is I start focusing on the feel of that up. That always reminds me of da 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 <laughs> da da right? But that's yeah. what it is. You're hearing that triplet and you're going to that note. So you're trying to get them all to be even. You're trying to make sure that the pinky is heard, right? Sometimes the pinky doesn't get uh, enough attack because maybe your pinky isn't strong enough. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back down. So I'm gonna go. And notice how I'm just going down, up, down, up, down, up, right? and then ending on that down. So that's a great little technique to start learning to develop strength, speed, stamina, and certainly synchronicity, right? It all comes from doing that over and over and over and being aware of all the components of it. Because like we talked about, again, I think it was in the first session, is about um, being honest with yourself when you practice. If it's not working or something's off, don't just try and pretend like it doesn't exist. Figure out what the problem is and then try and fix it. And you fix those things at slower speeds most often. There are times when something might need to be fixed at a faster speed, that certainly happens. But most of the time, you're trying to slow things down. Notice how my head moves when I get to that first string. Because in my mind, I'm thinking about bump, 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 bump. I'm, I don't really have to focus on deca, da, deca, da, deca, da, deca. I'm just thinking about my downbeats each time. Right? That's how this whole thing works. Now, again, every day, and I haven't practiced that much this morning. I was working on an audio thing this morning. But the goal is, is I sit and I work with these things over and over and over to synchronize my hands and my brain as I play. As I try and develop these various things. Okay, awesome. so that's the first thing to understand is when it comes to alternate picking, alternate picking is part of the battle, but the other battle is this hand has to be doing something. If you give it synchronization and not just, I should say, symmetry, which is if I give it three notes on each string, this hand can learn to do the same thing over and over and over very comfortably. Okay, now before I move on, because that's going to tie into my next conversation, but before I want to mo move on here, I'm going to see if Dan has anything. <sighs> Well, I just want to mention a couple of things, uh, resources that we have for you guys. Um, there's, there's people still keep um, coming in. New folks are coming in at uh, what we're doing this live broadcast, which is awesome. Just want to let you guys know that all of these are going to be available on the YouTube channel for you. Um, Steve, can I share my screen for a second? Because I'm going to show people how to actually navigate to that. Mm -hmm. um, how do I do this? Share screen. Guys, let me know if you can see my YouTube screen. I'm on the YouTube channel. Can you see it, Steve? Yep. yep. Cool. So guys, all of these sessions that we did for you are going to be available on YouTube. Just go to Guitar Zoom. I'm sorry. Just go to uh, YouTube, type in Guitar Zoom, and this will pop up. Click on this big old uh, uh, button right here, this big logo, and then just go straight over to Playlists. And when you click on Playlists, Everything will be available for you right here under the Central Techniques Live Guitar Workshop. Okay. 
So that's where all of the uh, the workshops are. And if we click on that, let's see how many, let's see, I can run you through. There's the web replay on it. See all these down here, guys? Uh, the first one we did, well, no, they're in this order. Cool. Uh, we did Feel the Rhythm. You see that one is an hour and 20. Uh, Central Techniques live session number two. This is Picking Perfection. It's an hour and 13 minutes. This one on uh, Playing Songs. We did one on Creative Soloing. We did one, uh, this is a live Q&A, which was really fun. And then uh, the one we just did the other day was the three critical soloing techniques. So all of these playlists are here for you. You can go and just check them out. Um, deep dive into whichever ones that you're most interested in. We have that available for you. Oop, let me click stop share. So all the workshops are going to be av available for you there. And of course, um, right now we extended the the introductory price on Steve's new course. It's Essential Techniques by Steve Stein, available at guitarzoom.com right now. It's been extended for a few more days that you can still get in because uh, we decided to do some more live workshops for you. So if you're interested in the course, go check it out. Also, we're going to do a live or we're going to do a Q&A here in just a minute. So make sure you get your questions in and make sure that you tell us uh, if you're interested in this. Tell us why you play guitar. What does it mean to you and how has it changed your life? That is a really cool thing for Steve and I to get to go back and read. We love reading your stories and hearing about how guitar playing has influenced you and what it's meant to you. Okay, my friend, uh, where do you want to take it from here? Okay. So again, we're running through this stuff pretty quick. Obviously, there's all kinds of other elements of learning these sorts of things, but I just want to explain to you the picking styles. So we've done alternate picking. So the next thing we move on to is what's called economy picking. Now, economy picking is when you utilize um, a small element of sweet picking while you're alternate picking. So let's say, for instance, I took the A major diatonic scale here and I played this. <laughs> And as I play it that way, you'll notice I'm alternate picking the whole thing. Okay. Another way that you could approach doing that, though, because I have more strings below me, where when I did this, I ran out of strings, right? Because I was making a pattern that goes up and comes back down. Okay. And I could do that anywhere, obviously. Well, now I'm going to travel toward the floor using all six strings. So one thing that I have an option of being able to do is play like this. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And you push that pick through each time, so you wind up with two downs. You see? So you can actually learn. I hear it all the time. I've heard it for 30 years of my life. <laughs> so I can push that pick through. Okay. Now, I see people asking about pick angle and things like that. And again, in one of the other live sessions, we talk about pick angle. But basically, the way I hold the pick is that I hold the pick like I'm pointing at you. I put the pick on there with the pick pointing at you. And then I turn and put my thumb over the top. And I always hold the pick towards the tip of the pick, not towards the middle of the pick. I'm always toward the tip of the pick. I use a, a, a little bit smaller pick than a, a standard fender size or something like that, just because it feels more comfortable to me. Now, as I'm playing these things, I am turning a little bit this direction. So I've got a forward slant a bit. You can see to get through those. So you can use that, that economy pick to get through very quickly to the next string, you see? Mm -hmm. Now, if I continue building more than one of these, this is where we get into this word called sweeping, okay? And basically what I'm doing there is I'm just doing more than one string. So let's say, for instance, uh, what might be an easier way to show you this? So let's say I was up here and I was going like this. So I'm playing 10 and I'm going over to 14 and then I'm playing 12 and 11. So I'm playing a 14, a 12 and 11 on different strings. So now all of a sudden I'm pushing through, I'm doing economy picking, but because I'm doing more than one string, we, we now tend to call this sweet picking. Okay. Because I'm pushing the pick through more than one string. So I use that a lot when I'm creating things. Where I'm, I'm having to, to kind of slice through multiple strings at once. Okay, so the point here is, is that we've got down picking, we've got alternate picking, 
and then we've got economy picking and we've got sweep picking. Now, all of that seems like a lot, but the truth is, is when you start learning how to play, you start developing which ones of these things feel the best to you in different circumstances. Because when I'm playing, my brain isn't going, okay, now it's time to economy pick or, but the truth is, is that there are certain licks or certain passages that I've created or memorized or whatever that I've developed a certain way to pick. Okay. So it is happening. It's just not happening consciously at that moment in time when I'm improvising, right? But when I was practicing, I totally had to think about that. And this is where a lot of students go wrong is when they're learning these sorts of things, they're so concentrating on what this hand is doing, because this is the cool hand, right? This is the hand that gets is, is the rock star. This is the one everybody watches. <laughs> mm -hmm. But this is the one oftentimes is the one that has to make the work, the whole thing flow, the job, the job happen. So it's trying to get used to being able to make sure that that knows what you're going to do. Are you on a down? Are you an on an up? Should you do two downs, right? You have to figure that out for yourself, what's going to work best. Now, in the recent years, there's been another technique that's come along called hybrid picking. And hybrid picking is great when you're doing a lot of legato stuff. And let's say you don't want to use, let's say I'm just taking two strings. I'm going to take five, seven, and nine. <laughs> Notice how I'm just picking once on each string. And I'm giving a little bit of a palm mute and I'm using my legato, my strength of my fingers. Okay. What uh, economy picking is, or excuse me, uh, hybrid picking is I would pick this string with my pick and I would pick this string with my middle finger. And I can make that transition even faster and my pick doesn't have to work so hard. Now there's a million different ways that you can use this, but it's a really great technique. You don't tend to use it when you're trying to alternate pick everything or something like that. It's when you're moving from somewhere, let's say I was doing something like that, where I'm building a, a, a pattern where I'm going to go back and forth between two strings. So what I'm doing right there is I'm going set, uh, five to seven, seven to seven, and nine to seven. See, if I try to do that with my pick, it's a lot of work, right? But if I just use this, so you can make some really cool patterns by doing that. By using that uh, hybrid picking. So that's another really cool thing that you can do. Very cool. So Steve, we have some uh, questions. Do you want to jump into those? Sure. All right, guys. So we're about um, halfway through, a little over halfway through of this particular workshop that we're doing for you. So let's just jump right into questions. If you have any questions about techniques, please post them. We'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, here's the first one, Steve. This comes from John Clifford M. Batali. He says, my picking, I'm sorry, my problem is my picking hand. When I try to pick fast using my wrist, it becomes tired already. <laughs> is that the question? Yeah. So I guess the question is, is how do you not? Um... Well, you've got to build strength, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, and the other thing is, is that you might pick from somewhere else. Like some people move their pick from their thumb, right? Mm -hmm. So with your wrist, the whole thing that I've learned is the way to develop a really fast down pick or alternate pick, but certainly down picking because down picking is just once you develop alternate picking, you can make it very fast, but it's the down picking because down picking. I've always thought of it as Cro-Magnon. Like that's how I've always taught it is it's like clubbing somebody over the head, right? It's all this energy that has to go back and forth like this or alternate picking is just is just very swift. So the thing about down picking is that you've got to develop that and a great way to develop that is obviously either doing exercises for a certain amount of time to develop that strength or to play it in song form. Find songs like uh, this morning I was working on um, Right? So songs like that, you don't even realize that they've got a lot of stuff in there that's worth learning. Right? 
You know, where there's a lot of songs that can benefit you that way by learning how to play those sections. Maybe you don't learn the whole song, but you can learn parts of that. And you just have to do it over and over and over. I remember being younger and learning how to play Master of Puppets was kind of my demise. It was Master of Puppets, and then there was a Slayer one, and I don't remember which one it was, but I couldn't downpick it because mm -hmm. I wasn't strong enough. So I couldn't. <laughs> Right? I couldn't do that. It was through a lot of practice that I, I started developing that ability. And it's just like working out. It's just like, you know, bodybuilding and anything else. If you don't stay up on it, it goes away. And mm -hmm. then you have to start all over again, right? And it's not that you don't retain some information. Of course you do all that sort of thing. But the more you stay on it, the, the stronger you'll be and the easier it is to maintain that level of playing. Yeah. I'm going to mix in some comments as we do the questions as well. This comes from Ken Johnson. I asked you guys uh, if you're comfortable sharing, like, what guitar, what guitar means to you? How has it changed your life? And uh, this comes from Ken Johnson. He says, I've been asked to play worship in the prison system a number of times. These events have touched some of the inmates in a big way. This has been huge for me. Guitar has not only been a big impact on me, it also impacts the people around me. That is an awesome story, Ken. Thanks for sharing that with us. So let's go into another question. Um, how about this one? How do you, oh, sorry, this comes from Arno, Arno Weldert. He says, how to control your thumb on the fretting hand? I have big hands and my thumb keeps bending and pressing and so on and causing pain a lot of the time. Well, again, I can't speak to having big hands. Again, I've had students that have had really big hands and when they play, I mean, it's, they're all over the fretboard. I, I've never had that problem. You know, for me, and this is only speaking from someone who has smaller hands, I, I don't, I don't grip hard at all when I play. So everything about playing, just about everything. I maybe I won't, I won't say everything, but just about everything is relaxed. It just has to be to be able to maintain, you know, longevity that sort of thing. Because again, there's there's a difference between getting through a song that's challenging and then getting through three hours of playing, right? Or four hours of playing or something. If you're playing in a band or you're, you're at a rehearsal or something like that, and you've got to maintain that stamina for a long period of time. Um, so part of it is you just got to learn how to relax everything. You know, because again, I think about students that have had really long hands. And if you can see, I, you know, having my hand down like this, I, you know, I've had students where their thumb will still be over the top and they're like this. I don't know what that's like. I can't, I don't even, I have no idea what that feels like. Mm -hmm. But I will say that I don't think having small hands is a benefit to playing guitar. I think you just, you just make it work however you make it work. Like Steve I has got really long, thin fingers. He's got a really, really long hands. Um, and he plays more like you might be talking about if you watch him play. I don't play anything like him because my fingers, my hands, my hands aren't like that. Um, but I think in all honesty, man, I, I don't think guitar was created for big hands or little hands. I think it's just, we all have to wrap ourselves around it and figure out what works best. But I would say to relax a little bit, your thumb should really just be more of a guide than it is for like tension for squeezing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Here's a question from Norman Perez. He says, I have problems with bar chords. Is there an exercise for practicing so my bar, bar chords sound clean? And there's also several other comments about bar chords. Yeah. And, and I go through this in the course too, but a couple things that you can do, um, bar chords, I always tell people this story, bar chords were almost the demise of guitar playing for me. I hated bar chords so much that I almost quit playing guitar because I couldn't get them to work. And, um, and then one day, and I'm not even lying to you, scouts honor, even though I'm not a scout. Um, <laughs> one day I woke up and I could do them. So I went from hating them, not being able to do them to being able to do them. And that's honestly how it worked. And that's how a lot of things work. But I will give you a bit of advice though, is that when you play, when you make your bar chord, try and have your thumb kind of toward, like don't have your thumb way over here, have your thumb kind of in the center of that bar chord. Okay. The other thing is think about where your finger is this direction because the knuckles can cause issue because if the string winds up where you have a knuckle, a bend point, right? Sometimes it's hard to press down that string. So you want to think about where you are here. And then the last thing with this is that think about turning this way a little bit like this, 
because when I play, I don't play with my finger flat. I play on the side of my finger, sort of. Again, not completely the side, but kind of in between this side and this side, right? Kind of a 45 degree angle in there is where I stay, okay? And that way, if my finger turns a little bit, I still have a straight edge. Then the next thing is, is think about where your elbow is. You know, when you play bar chords, if you're over here, if your elbow's over here, it's pushing you in the wrong direction. If I turn this way, you see, I've got more space to get underneath there. And also, the last thing is, is remember when you're making a chord like, let's say you make D, which is like this. And then you make C, which is like this. Right, if you make D and you try and make C like that, it's very hard to get these fingers up here. Where D, it feels great. C does not work. If I turn in, I'm taking my smaller fingers and giving them a fighting chance. Well, a lot of times with bar chords, you've got to learn to turn in a little bit to give these fingers a fighting chance. Because if you're coming at this angle, there's no way they're going to get up there. Mm -hmm. Right? So if I turn under a little bit, I'm giving it more, more of a chance. But again, there, I go into more detail with that in the course, but those hopefully will help you. Yeah. And for those of you just joining us, guys, when Steve keeps saying the course, he's talking about his new essential techniques course. Uh, which is available right now at guitarzoom.com. Just click on the big banner at the homepage. It says essential techniques. The introductory price is available for a few more days. Uh, and then that'll be gone. There's also some cool fast action bonuses on there. So I, you actually get a, we're giving away a course. It's called um, Cage. Is it Cage Me Simple? Sorry, I just lost it. <laughs> Steve started noodling and I started listening to him. Oh, it's Chord Chasing Mastery. Chord Chasing Master, you actually get that entire course uh, when you order uh, during the limited time uh, session that we have here. So anyway, it's going to go for a couple more days. Essential Techniques is what Steve's referring to. It's a six-hour course um, available at guitarzoom.com. Let's do a comment real quick. I can't see where this is from. Uh, la, 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 la. It just says either. Facebook user. huh? I've got one after you. Oh, okay. This one says, uh, this person, I don't see their name because of the privacy thing or whatever, but anyway, it says, <clears throat> while having, so we, we asked the question, why do you play guitar and how has it helped you or how has it changed your life? We still would love to, for you to tell us that. We'd like to go back and read those. So here it is. While having cancer, guitar helped me through the treatments and watching you has helped me feel better. Thanks for all your classes. So I think that's a amazing story there for you, Steve. Oh, yeah, go ahead and read that one. Okay, so this one says how to play soft with overdrive. I can't get a soft attack with higher gain. Depends on how much higher gain you have. I mean, if you're running a 5150 and you've got it full on high gain and you're trying to back off, you might not be able to get in that zone. So you, first of all, you got to make sure that the, the, the distortion is reasonable, right? So when you turn all the way up, you've got the amount of distortion that you need, or maybe even a pedal that you can press to put you even in the next level. But if you pop that pedal off and back off, like right now I'm using a... You know, there's a nominal amount of distortion on there, but if I... And notice how I'm changing my toggle switch, right? I'm changing to a single coil, lowering my volume down. See, so you've got to have the right, you've got to be able to utilize dynamic touch, change your, your pickup selector or your volume, that sort of thing. But your amp has got to be able to get there. So some amps just, they just don't respond well with cleaning up. And again, if you have way too much gain on there, it's really hard to get back in that clean zone. So mm -hmm. that's something to think about a little bit too. Here's one from Electroshock. He says, how do you produce a pinch harmonic? What's your technique as it relates to picking? Well, we've already talked about this one a number of times too, but basically pinch harmonic is, is just real shortness here. Um, all you do to get a pinch harmonic, it's all done with this hand. It has nothing to do with this hand. You play a note that you want and just watch as I do this. So what happens is if I turn the pick this way, 
So I'm on the string and I turn the pick. So now my thumb is touching the string along with the guitar pick. As I push that pick through, the last thing to touch that string is the thumb. The thumb causes the harmonic. So I'm not picking hard, I'm not pushing really hard. I don't have to do any of that. I'm literally just turning the pick. And I get that, that pinch harmonic sound. Now, there are different, like if I do this, you'll notice there's a lot of different options of pinch harmonic sounds. You have to find the one that works best on your guitar and sounds best to your ear. I always tell people mine is usually kind of right over the middle position pickup is kind of where I am, but you got to figure out what works best for you. But, but what's really nice about that is you can just slip into a pinch harmonic anytime by just turning your wrist up. You know, and go right into that. So that's how that's done. Mm. I just saw a comment that said, please go to full screen for your demo, Steve. I think they don't oh, want to see me that. when you're trying to play. What about that? Yeah. <laughs> I do too. Uh, so here's another one. Gaz Davey says, hi, I struggle with strumming slash picking technique like in Can't Stop by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He seems to be able to pick out the notes while strumming at the same time. I just get a load of noise. Laugh out was, loud. Yeah, I always call it <laughs> funk strumming. Let me let me go to a, a different sound here. Let me go to this one. <laughs> It's like that Steve Ray Vonish thing. And you can tighten it up as much as you want. And again, what it is, is at the very beginning of this, this uh, live session where I was talking about how you deaden everything, that's exactly what you're doing. Black Cat, probably don't remember that. Janet Jackson, Nuno Betancourt played guitar on that. But that's how you do it, is you just, you, you get used to being able to hit everybody. Now, as I move down, of course, now my six string is gonna become exposed. So either I don't hit the six string, or I gotta deaden it out with some other finger. Because now I can't use this palm muting deadening thing I was telling you about, because I'm strumming right so so cool here's a question from tally gaston steve are you running an overdrive pedal or do you rely on your amp um well i'm running everything in my camper right now but i do run a gain pedal in the camper so at any time if i need to what i always try and do is i try and build a tone that's in the center and then I've got a pedal that can push me over the edge if I need to. But as I was just saying about cleaning up your tone, I like to disable that, that gain pedal or that distortion pedal so I can back it off. Like with this tone, see, if I do this, you can hear the, the gain pedal come out of the distortion pedal. So I can get a little bit more of like an Eric johnson -y kind of... take that off and again I can always back this off see so i can get a whole host of different sounds from that now if i was going to do something that was metal this tone wouldn't cut it okay so then i have another tone set up for and this one doesn't really need a distortion pedal because it's already really heavy but this wouldn't be the tone that i would go to if i wanted to clean up you see this is meant for heavy stuff so hopefully that helps a little bit awesome Sean Evans says, is this guidance applicable to acoustic and electric? Do you recommend practicing these exercise, exercises with one over the other? Um, no, I mean, they're, they're all uh, applicable 
applicable to uh, <laughs> to acoustic or electric. It's just acoustic is just generally harder to practice these things on. You know, I I commend anybody that practices all of this stuff on an acoustic because acoustic just is is more challenging. It just is. Um, but it doesn't matter if you choose if if your primary instrument is going to be acoustic you still got to develop strength and speed and stamina and all these other things relative to the instrument that you want to play it doesn't matter if it's a tuba or a saxophone or a piano or a guitar you know what i mean we all have to do it in whatever realm that we're, we're working with so for me if i go to acoustic and i start playing acoustic i tire out quicker on acoustic far more quick quicker than i do on an electric um and it's not, again, it's not that I don't love playing acoustic. I really do. But I, I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm an electric guy. I grew up playing electric and my, my heart is attached to an electric guitar. And I love playing acoustic. But if I had to get rid of one or the other on a deserted island, my acoustic would be gone. And I'm not saying that to influence anybody else. What I'm saying is you want to find that same connection to whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, because I've built my technique, I've built the way I play around not only electric guitar, but specific kinds of guitars. You'll notice that I play a lot of the same guitars over and over and over because they feel a certain way and it all puts me in my comfort zone. Love it. I'm not the kind of guy that can just walk into a guitar store and grab any guitar off the shelf and just rip and tear it up. That's, it doesn't work that way for me. If I grab a guitar and it's really awkward to play, I don't try and play the things I normally do. I play differently. Got it. Here's one uh, question, Steve, from Stefan Domeyer. He says, did you stop playing? Or, I'm sorry. Did you stop using your Hughes and Kettner amp? Um, no, my Hughes and Kettner amp is actually at a rehearsal space where I practice. Um, I found that with all the stuff that I do with doing not just live stuff like this, but, you know, Guitar Zoom has this thing called Play Songs. It's a, it's a, a membership where I do songs. I, I show how to play songs and break them down and all that sort of thing. And with the Kemper, I can get closer to Van Halen tones and Randy Rhodes tones and all these different variable tones. So the Kemper works really great for this sort of thing. Um, the Hughes and Kentner doesn't have all of that stuff. It's a great sounding amp. And so that I use for practices. I use it for my rehearsal and that sort of thing. I've used it on stage before that sort of thing. Steve just mentioned play songs guys that's available at playsongs.com that's a membership and the entire thing is just songs so if you're uh, interested there I don't know if you can see that but that's perfect <laughs> there's no <laughs> deserted island <laughs> no electricity on a deserted so island where's that person from I'd, I'd like to know that's funny um <laughs> Lorraine McGowan says, can you slow down songs to practice with? Do we have that ability? I can't remember. We've been I working. I don't think we have it yet, but we're working on it to be able to slow the songs down. You can loop them, um, but I don't And you can that... also just, yeah, you can loop and you can choose which right. part you want you to can loop. Download the, you can download the, um, the jam tracks or the backing tracks. And mm -hmm. then I use a program called Amazing Slowdown or to slow them down on mine. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's little plugins you guys you can use for that, I believe. Right, guys? All right, guys. I just want to, we're about bumping up on an hour here. I know Steve is super busy. Steve, I want to thank you in advance for coming with us. We're going to take a few more questions. I do want to mention the free resources as well as the paid resources that we have for you guys um, if you're interested in that. We have a podcast now. It's called the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. You might want to check that out. A lot of people have uh, subscribed to it, and I just noticed we had like some five-star reviews, which is super cool. We haven't really put a lot of effort into getting the word out about the podcast, but that's available for you. Uh, the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. Also, um, all of these sessions we've done for you here will be in a nice, tidy playlist for you on the Guitar Zoom YouTube channel. We have three YouTube channels, Guitar Zoom, Steve Stein, and the Guitar Zoom Songs channel. Okay, so if maybe you're subscribed to one of those, but not the others, if you'd be interested, if you know, if you're interested in songs, subscribe to the songs one. If you're interested uh, in following Steve's closest stuff, the Steve Stein channel, and then the Guitar Zoom channel, we're also posting to uh, at least weekly. We also have a 30 day trial membership right now to our VIP club where you get uh, instant access to over 400 lessons. And um, that's been around for a while. We've done a pretty bad job at promoting it. But right now, if you go to guitarzoom.com, there's on the homepage a 30 day free trial. 
and you can check that out. Uh, it's different than anything else that we've ever done before. Steve, you want to tell them kind of your thought process behind VIP? Well, the big thing with VIP is, is that not everybody is looking for a guitar course. Not everybody's looking for six hours of study. Sometimes you just like for me often, because especially because I've been playing for many, many years, I just need motivation. Like I need something small that I can watch or see or hear and go, okay, that's, that's what I want to work on. And then I grab that and I start using it. That was the whole point of VIP was just to have small bits of things where maybe for a week or two weeks or a month or whatever it might be, you just grab something that matches kind of where you are just to get motivated and, and learn something unique and new. Like for me, I'll just learn like some new lick or I'll practice some new lick and go, oh, that's really cool. It's just something different. And then oftentimes what I do is I turn around and take the licks that I'm trying to figure out and I make them into stuff in the VIP group. So everybody can learn them. That's right. So VIP is small, chunky lessons that you can just uh, latch onto and learn one cool thing a month. That's the whole idea behind that. And you can try it free at uh, guitarzoom.com. Uh, we also have the... Um, so what else? Uh, the playlist, guitar zoom, guitar zoom, guitar zoom. Yes. And of course, the, the course it's right now, introductory price, essential techniques. I do want to show you guys this really quickly. I'm just going to show them the mind map. Some people have already asked, like, show us Steve's brain. Steve, can uh, you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Check this out, guys. This is what Steve created. This is his work unedited. So if you're like, I don't really understand what this means. This, this is the brain. This is Steve's brain when he sits down to actually create a course for you. This one, he just wrote Essential Techniques Course 2020. We didn't know when it was going to come out. Wasn't sure when he was going to get done with it. It turned out to be about a six and a half hour course. And uh, this is the different topics. And you see here, he starts out with the intro discussion, the guitar amp and setup. I'm going to blow this up a little bit for you guys. Chords, strumming and rhythm, picking hand development, fretting hand development. Uh, let me get into, sorry, this thing's kind of hard to navigate. Um, the whole section of vibrato, whole section on bends, the whole section on hand synchronization, slides. And then I'm not even showing you the whole thing. If I turn this thing, this, uh, sorry, if I turn this like this, check how far this, I don't know if you guys can see that. This is how much this thing branches out. So for example, <laughs> if you just look at bends, just the bends part of this thing, the whole section, there's a whole section on bends, whole bends, half bends, three frets, blues bends, unison bends, harmony bends, ghost bends or pre bends, double pumps, siren bends, uh, bend, whoops, don't mean to mess up your mind map there, uh, mm -hmm. siren bends, bending slides, bending pull offs. I mean, this thing is huge, guys. Hand synchronization, a whole section on that, a whole section on slides. A whole section on arpeggios, a whole section on string skipping, playing octaves, a whole thing on tapping, uh, harmonics, dynamic tools. The thing that we're talking about today mostly is picking control. If you take a look at the picking section over here, there's actually, we covered some of these exercises in a previous workshop. Let's see, where is it, Steve? Picking control right here. So there is a section just on like some, some, some person asked about exercise. Exercises. There's a 30 second, 30 second exercise, 60 second, one minute, and then it goes up to the three minute exercise. This thing is jam packed, guys, and a whole lot of people have already signed up for it. For it, I think you're going to love it. It's Steve's brand new course, and it's called Essential Techniques by Steve Stein. Available at right now at the introductory price at guitarzoom.com. I'm super excited about this course, Steve, because we've never had anything that's just on technique. So thank you for making that for us Absolutely. and for all the people to enjoy. Um, where do we go from here, man? I think I think that's enough for for people to try and work on is just understanding that you've got alternate picking. Well, you got down picking. You've got alternate picking. You've got economy picking. You've got sweeping, so to speak. Um, and then at any point with any of those things, you've got legato. So for me, for instance, when I play, I don't. I don't just strictly pick everything or legato everything. It's all just a natural flow across the fretboard. And, and that's the last thing I guess I would say is, is remember, the better you know you, you can navigate around your fretboard, 
and again, it doesn't have to be a 100% absolute thing, but the better you're able to navigate around your fretboard, the more options you have for things. So for me, that was just one of the biggest things for me to learn was being able to... Is to be able to move around the fretboard as opposed to just being stuck like in one position. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Um, thank you for being here, guys. It's always a blessing. It's a privilege that you guys show up and hang out with us. We hope that you got something out of today's workshop. Steve, thanks again for being here. Absolutely. Really always appreciate you, man. You're just one of the most giving people I've ever known in my life. It's awesome. And thank you for all of you for taking your time. To me, that's the best gift you can give us is your time um, because you could be doing a lot of things and you chose to be here with us. So thank you for that. We do Absolutely. appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone who's already invested in Essential Techniques. I saw a lot of people said, hey, I already got the course. This is what I'm working on. Uh, and that's super helpful. That's what allows us to be able to continue to do what we do. So if you're interested in learning techniques, techniques for regardless of if you want to learn soloing, you want to play a rhythm, you know, if you're uh, want to be a rhythm guitar player, if you want, whatever that means, if you want to, uh, learn ACD song, ACDC songs, or you want to play acoustic, uh, at your worship, uh, service at your church, like no matter what you do, there's certain techniques guys that you need to know that would allow you to go in any direction you want. That's why Steve created this course and uh, you can get it right now at the introductory price. It's called essential techniques by Steve Stein and it's available at guitar zoom Dot com. Steve, thanks again. Appreciate Absolutely. you, man. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here and, and hang out with everybody and stay positive, of course, and keep practicing. That's the most important thing. Awesome. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next next time around. Okay. Bye, everybody.